Thank you. I call upon Representative Brian Newberry to second the nomination of Representative Blake Felipe. Thank you, Chairman Abney. Uh, before I, well, I am going to second the nomination, but before I do, I want to say a few words about Leader Shikarchi as well. Um, although he was much more experienced in politics in Rhode Island than I was, before he got elected to this chamber, he was a freshman, and uh, I remember he sat behind me his first two years, and we got to know each other really well. He used to, uh, I would use the word badger, he used to say to me, you got any good bills? And I said, all my bills are good bills, Joe. And he signed on to several of them, and yet somehow, I don't think any of them passed, maybe some North Smithfield Town bills passed, I don't remember. But I found Joe to be exactly as the people who have nominated him to say he was. He was sincere, uh, he was respectful, he listened to other people's views, he was eager to learn, and that was eight years ago. And uh, if I were a Democrat, I think he'd be an excellent choice for Speaker. I am not gonna vote for him for Speaker, he knows that, no surprise there, but um, I will say to him on behalf of the Republicans that Joe, you know we will work with you when we agree. I know you'll work with us. Uh, when we disagree, we'll be respectful about it. Nobody will be on the internet saying you're a terrible person because you have a job. Um, that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna work together, and uh, I look forward to that, since I know you're gonna win this election. As Mike said, it's ritualistic. I can't vote for you, though, not because of anything involving you, but because our state needs some serious changes. This year is probably gonna be the most challenging year any of us veterans or people in their first year who may be here for 20 more years are probably gonna face. Uh, COVID-19 has done a number on the budget as we know. When I first got elected, uh, which there's a few people here have been here a lot longer than I have, but I've reached the point now where most people have and it's a little hard to believe. I remember that first year was the middle of the Great Recession, 2009. And uh, I remember then Speaker Murphy gathered all the newly elected representatives together to tell us about the dire budget situation we faced. It was a very, very difficult, a lot of difficult decisions had to be made. And in the years since, I have seen us as a body make decisions on budgetary issues, taxes, things like that. Most of which I haven't been in full agreement with, some of which have been good. I remember at the end of that first session, we reformed by unanimous vote, by the way, every single member of this chamber at the time, and that is still the wide spectrum of politics that you see in this chamber today voted for an income tax system that was fair. It reduced the top rate to something manageable. Nobody, by the way, paid that old top rate. They found ways around it. And it got rid of a lot of the deductions and loopholes and things like that. It was something everybody could get behind. So there's been some good things done, but the problem at the end of the day is, and if those of you who are not new will remember, I stood here in December during the budget debate then, and I said that one of the most important things we all need to do, and I think we all agree on this, is we need to have the money to pay for those things that are really needed, to help take care of people who can't take care of themselves. But money doesn't grow on trees, and this state is slowly bleeding people and money and taxes and jobs, and we really haven't done much to reverse that during the 12 years that I've been here. Uh, I don't like politics by anecdote, but I'm gonna mention one person. I remember this very well. They're a constituent of mine many years ago. Their youngest daughter was my daughter's age. She was in her class, and they ran a business in North Smithfield out of their house, the, some kind of financial services business. They paid a lot in taxes, property tax, income tax, et cetera. And the instant that their youngest daughter was admitted to Mount St. Charles in Woonsocket, they put their house in the market and moved to Uxbridge. Nothing really changed about their life, but they started paying taxes to Massachusetts. That's what happens when you try to kill the golden goose. We need to do something severe in this state to do something to help our business community because you don't have money to pay for social services unless you've got tax money to bring in and you can't just keep piling the taxes on to people. I can tell you that if Leader Filippi were the Speaker of the House and had enough votes for a budget in that capacity, we would make some fundamental changes. So with all respect to Leader Shikarchi, I strongly urge you to vote for Leader Filippi. And I want to add one last thing. There's been some public talk that some of the folks here may abstain from this vote. And for what it's worth, I'm gonna give a word of advice to those people. People who may be thinking that are probably people who disagree with me politically on most things, that's okay. Maybe you're not interested in what I have to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I advise you not to do that for two reasons. First, we don't get elected not to make decisions. I think everybody here who's not a freshman has at one time or another, to use the parlance, taken a walk on a bill. I've done it. I remember a bill in 2013 um, that was, it had a lot of emotional connotation to it. I remember that uh, a lot of people in my 
part of the state were very passionately in support of the bill and the concept of it, people who supported me generally. I didn't want to insult them or make them think that I didn't care about the issue by voting against the bill, but the bill was also blatantly unconstitutional. I mean, it was really ridiculous. Uh, I, I couldn't vote for it in good conscience, especially as a lawyer. So I knew that the, uh, the Senate was not going to take the bill up anyway. So it was more of a symbolic vote, so I didn't vote on it. And I have no regrets about that. But it really wasn't an important vote in the grand scheme of things. There are three votes that matter most of all the votes that we take every year or every two years. The vote for speaker, the vote for the rules, and the vote for the budget. I think all of us have a responsibility to make a public stand on those three votes. Just my opinion. But I have one other point to make, something thinking back to my first term that I remember very clearly as well, because things stick with you. I went to the freshman orientation session in December of 2008, and my predecessor, Minority Leader Bob Watson, gave a speech as is typical, you know, um, as part of the process to the freshmen. And those of you here, and there's now Marianne's back, so there's now five of us from 2008, well, might remember this well. Bob said, make friends while you're up here. And, you know, people who didn't know Bob or just watched this on television might have thought that the Democrats hated him because he was constantly critical. He gave good speeches, but he's very critical of Democrats in the paper and the press. But you know what? Almost everybody I know who served with Bob liked him in person because he got along with people. He knew how to make friends, and he could be effective. And the people who he criticized for the most part understood it was part of the process. When you abstain from a speaker choice, you're really insulting the people who are put up there. If you can't in good conscience vote for either Joe or for Blake because you don't agree with their politics, there's nothing wrong with that. I know that Joe isn't gonna take it personally and I'm not voting for him because there's an alternative. But to sit there and say, those two people are unacceptable, but I'm not gonna put myself forward or someone else I agree with, I, I think, you know, everybody's human. I'd like to think that I wouldn't take it personally. Maybe Joe won't, maybe Blake won't. But people are human, think about that. If you don't support them, that's fine. Vote for an alternative. Don't just say no. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't set right with me. Just my opinion. Thank you. I urge you to vote for Leader Filippi. I suspect I know what the vote outcome will be, but I urge you anyway. Thank you.